thanks for taking um thanks for taking yin yoga practice with me today i am grateful to be in your homes in your spaces and a part of your day so i really appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today <laughs> We're gonna start off seated today. So finding a way to sit as comfortably as we can. Um, today, I happen to be sitting on a block. You could sit on a bolster, you could straddle a bolster, you could take lots of different um, options, ways to sit <clears throat> that support your body today based on how your body's feeling. Anything that, that feels good. I'm gonna change my seated position just because I can. When we sit for just a moment in the beginning of our practice, it's a way for us to take the time to let go of the day's distractions, to hone in on the moment, to start beginning that practice of mindfulness, of um, just being aware of what's going on in our mind, how we're breathing, what our heart and emotions are, are saying to us today. Um, what our physical body is feeling like. So it, it's taking that inventory, that checking in, um, that navigation inward and starting to shelter out all of the sort of distractions um, that we might find in our space. <clears throat> so I'll often say that when you roll out your mat, you know, treat that as a sacred space. It, um, signifies to you and your body and your mind to just um, to go inward and to, and to start this practice with intention and with purpose so rolling out your mat and claiming your space claiming this moment in time as yours yours alone and starting to again navigate through some of those distractions and settle in to wherever you are today so as we sit here for a moment, let's think about how we can better our practice by being, again, more and more aware of what's happening in the physical body and in thinking mind. Setting ourselves up, if you will, for a more productive and uh, insightful journey through the postures. And so one of the ways that I'll often recommend is that we pay attention to the posture in the body. We start to think about this heavy sort of base of the body, the foundation of the statue, the heart rising, the shoulders dropping, sort of beginning this process of creating lots of space. Lengthening the body, allowing now for the torso to have all this space so that when I'm breathing, everything is able to kind of flow in and out easily. And when we start that sort of creating space, we can create the rhythmic breath, we can start to quiet the mind. I'm going to tap in to the right here and the right now. So as you found some good posture, let's find some good full yogic breath. That long inhale, <clears throat> complete exhale. Inhaling and exhaling for the greater purposes, um, at least a count of four, five, or six, maybe more than that if that is um, doable for your lung capacity. But equal in length, the inhale and the exhale. And I say that unless you feel like it would benefit you, or if you feel scattered and busy and your mind is soaring and reeling, maybe you then take the focus on the exhale, that downward energy that grounds us. If you feel sluggish, slow, unmotivated, uh, struggle to sort of engage, think about the inhale a little bit more predominantly. Maybe that's a little bit longer. Maybe you have a bit of retention at the top of sort of cultivating that upward, lifting, outward energy. So again, either even in length to one another, the inhale and exhale, or again, if sluggish and slow, that upward energy of the inhale is the point of focus, so maybe a little longer or maybe a bit of retention at the top. Crazy and feeling scattered and chaotic today, maybe a little longer on the exhale than the inhale, and 
and maybe again a bit of retention at the bottom of the exhale. Even taking the time to think about something like that for yourself can change how you practice and how you move through your day radically. And a concept like that isn't just for your yoga practice, it's for you every day in every situation you might find yourself. So just taking these few moments here to recognize where you are today mentally and physically, adjusting the pranayama practice, the breath control, that movement of chi, prana, and life force energy through the body. Okay, if you'll join me, we'll take Anjali Mudra, which is this beautiful prayer position, the palms resting softly against one another, making an intimate connection with the heart center. Lift your heart, lift the crown of the head, and maybe gently smile here. If you'd like to join me, I'll chant the sound of home to begin our practice today. Beautiful. Gently, softly open the eyes and release the hands. The first posture, I, I think we're going to take a, a practice that's really a lot about our spine today, um, but we're going to open up with a uh, swan pose, so getting right into those hips. So let's open up the hips enough so that we can take the forward and backward bending postures that will facilitate um, working on our spine today. So we're going to take our time to find <clears throat> the props that we need, that we think we might need, to support ourselves in uh, swan or pigeon pose. Now again, I would recommend getting into swan from a downward facing dog, maybe moving around a little bit here. I'm just gonna sort of demonstrate how to get into it and then we will uh, we'll start the timer. I'll let you know when we're starting the timer. So we'll press into one foot, maybe start with the right leg, lift it up, stretch it out, bend the knee, maybe move through the hip. And when you're ready, exhaling, bring the right knee to the front of the mat and setting back into the long left leg. So if that's too much and you're not feeling all that, just from your hands and knees is just fine. A couple of cues I want you to be aware of. When my knee comes to the front, it is to the outer edge of the mat. So you want this femur bone to ride along the rib cage. And the heel is pretty close to that hip bone. And so when I begin to lay down, I want to be careful that I keep my shoulders and my hips in a nice square box. Oftentimes when we begin to lay down, we tend to sit off to one side or the other. So watch that form that we stay right down the center. And finding this long, tall, upward position first, so the body is long before we begin to exhale and fold forward, and if I'm folding forward, again, if I've got props, like a nice bolster like this, when I come to lay down, now I can take all the weight off my arms, neck, and shoulders and find my rest here. So again, if you don't have something like a bolster where you are, a rolled up blanket, towel or two, a couple of pillows off the couch works just fine. And so we're stretching the back of the right hip deep into the piriformis muscle underneath the glutes and then all the front of the left leg. Starting your five minutes now, remembering that your first and foremost responsibility is breath. And if you're unable to breathe well because you've pushed yourself into a posture too deep, it's gonna hold you back from having the best possible experience with the pose. So find the edge, um, maybe going 65, 70, 75% of where you think you can go. Support yourself, let the body relax, surrender into it. Um, because the reality is you're, you're literally putting stress on the body intentionally so that it will then eventually open up and let go, right? We're focusing on the yin tissues of the body and the yin tissues are unlike yang tissues are your muscles, soft, moist, squishy, flexible, stretchy. And you would compare um, 
a, a muscle, a young tissue to a rubber band where it can expand and contract, expand and contract. That's what our muscles are doing. So that would be considered a young tissue and, and we need comparison. The yin tissues, tendons, ligaments, fascia, much more like a plastic grocery store bag, let's say. When you take the plastic grocery store bag and you would need to put constant pressure on opening that up. Um, that would be the only way that you would find some release is just by that little bit of tension, pressure, hold, hold, hold. And so we soften the bellies of the muscles, get to those deeper tissues, that more plastic-like tissue, and sit, breathe, soften eyes, relax the jaw, resting in the posture, in that state of uncomfortable, but knowing that you're gonna be okay. Soft eyes and lower jaw, breathing deeply. Take yourself back to where we were a few moments ago when I asked you to think about whether or not your breath should be even or whether you should focus on the inhales or the exhales. And try to keep that pattern that you've chosen as appropriate for you today Try to keep that pattern of breath throughout every posture that we do. For most of us, this is the only time um, during a day where we'll actually practice pranayama, breath control, movement of energy, intentional. Because our bodies will breathe itself all day long. There's no effort needed there, no thought that has to happen. Um, but this is breath with a very specific purpose. And so we can fine tune breath control for what we need in the moment. Just one of the methods focusing on inhale or exhale to begin to bring some balance to the mind. You're just at three minutes. If at any point during this or any other posture there becomes pain, um, it's not a place you wanna be. So you'll either find yourself easing out of the pose and taking a rest in any position that feels good, or maybe just adding some more support um, to the posture wherever you are to make it um, comfortable enough to be challenging, but not painful. And the opposite of that is true. If you find that you've supported yourself and then you become very aware of the fact that your body has begin, begun to soften, to surrender, to let go. Muscle groups have begun to relax. So feel free to start peeling those layers of support away so that you can take a deeper experience. You have just about one more minute here. And my experience with my own practice and experience guiding students, um, we all have a tendency, whether we are that person that tends to be um, competitive and likes to challenge ourselves and push past and move you know, into deeper, deeper, deeper. Or there's some of us that are a little um, less likely to challenge ourselves and we'll take the easy way out. And so some of us are gonna find that we're in one of those extremes or the other, and then you have to check yourself when you need to, particularly in a yin yoga practice where patience is needed. Waiting is important. Being challenged is important. Last several breaths here in your swan pose. <clears throat> From that position, take your time to get two strong hands back underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers wide, press in and lift up. Maybe pause there for a moment. <clears throat> to come out back into downward facing dog, you'll curl the left toes under, press in, lift the knee, lift the hips off the floor. Continue to press into your hands to lift everything off the floor. It gives you the space to bring the leg back, Again, you might stop here and sort of pedal things out a little bit, stretching through the backs of the legs. You may come to hands and knees, take some cat cows. You may find child's pose feels good. You might take forward rest, just simply laying down on your belly. There is no right or wrong way to do that. 
So take a minute or two here to move, to breathe, to sort of work out the kinks, um, taking notice of any information that your body is giving you about the pose. Uh, maybe some of the details, like you didn't have enough support in one particular area of the body. Um, maybe a foot was off the mat and it was on a hard surface and that didn't feel good. You can always add blankets or towels underneath <clears throat> those tender spots. So just mindful breath, movement, anything that feels good before we take second side. All right, so what we do is we'll prepare for our second side in the same fashion as we did the first side. But if you're, if you've practiced any length of time, you know, oftentimes when we take a posture with left and right sides, there is a very radical difference. And so um, we go in with the sort of general idea of how we might support ourselves and let the body speak to us and tell us if it needs more or less. So again, if you like to come into it from downward facing dog, um, upside down triangle, maybe inhale, lifting the leg. So again, in that downward facing dog, from here you might lift the left leg, exhale, bend the knee, kind of move around through the hip a little bit, right? Straighten. I like to use the exhale because that's going to help contract the front body to bring the left knee up. It's important here to then sit back, right? Get long and sit back into that long right leg. And again, instead of just laying immediately down the floor, find a good foundation, find your upward lift first. Begin to take this stretch all the way through the full length of the body. Begin to see what this is feeling like. Again, you could be adding some support underneath a straight leg. You could be adding it underneath the back of the bent leg. Certainly support down in the front and laying on the floor is not reasonable. Again, as I'm exhaling and starting to come forward, I need to resist the urge to sort of shift my weight side to side and resist the tendency. I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer now. Resist the tendency to take your posture here on your elbows because the reality is oh, there's tension in my shoulders and my neck right here holding myself up. And so it would be very beneficial to take some props and to find some support so that you can get all of the weight off of the chest, the shoulders, the neck, etc. <clears throat> and particularly if you have something really nice and big like a bolster, you know, even resting the head and the neck so that, again, all of this tension is gone. And then all of my focus then becomes on that lower part of the body. And um, you're supported and the chest gets soft and open, your arms are relaxed. So that's where I say, you know, really utilizing the props is so valuable, so valuable. So settling in here, how am I doing with my breathing? Did I totally forget about that? Oftentimes we do. And now we're just kind of resting and, and not thinking about it too much. We might find that as we um, transition into a posture, we kind of lost thinking about it. But real important once you settle, because again, you're putting intentional stress and strain on the body. And if the breath is shallow, sketchy, if you're holding your breath, if you're grimacing, like all those things cause congestion and stagnation and you want free movement, blood, fluid, energy, you know, all of it kind of moving through and it's, that's where the breath comes into play. So again, go back to where we started, focusing on even inhale and exhale or potentially the longer um, or retention on the inhale if you're feeling sluggish. If you're struggling to stay steady and stable and focused, 
focus on your exhalation and maybe again a little longer on the exhale maybe maybe a bit of retention at the bottom of the exhale before you begin to inhale utilizing the breath even more to kind of carry you through the poses to kind of carry you through the crazy that's going on in there right and maybe you're not so crazy today maybe today's a, a good easy sort of stable um, mellow kind of day for you and that's great keep your breath balanced stay right there with it you're just over two and a half minutes how about unnecessary tension that you might be sort of holding on to and not realizing that you're doing it and oftentimes that can be in the hands you know clenching the fists not realizing it could be hanging on to a prop you know you got a little tension in the grip it could be the lower jaw, teeth clenched, um, that creating that space in between the top, the top and the lower teeth, letting the tongue sit. An easy way to really soften the lower jaw, the cheeks, right, the eyes, the forehead muscles here. Um, just really being soft and kind and even just, so I, I say it oftentimes, just smile, because that feels better than being tense and just to smile at yourself, particularly if we're struggling with crazy thoughts and uh, they're circulating in and out of the mind over and over. Instead of letting them frustrate you, just smile. You know? Never a bad thing to give a good smile, even if no one's looking, it just feels good. You have just about one more minute here. Last 30 seconds. <clears throat> Again, last several breaths, and when you find yourself ready, two strong hands, palms flat on the floor, press in and begin to rise up. Pause there for a moment, get yourself situated, get nice, good alignment. And again, curling the right toes under, press in, get the knee off the floor, press in even further to lift the hips, and you'll be able to get the left leg back. And then just again, whatever feels good, maybe being in down dog, really stretching out here, maybe being on your hands and knees, stretching out the legs, moving around here. You could lay all the way down the belly and take forward breaths, a little back bend might feel nice. You could lay on your back and sort of roll around a little bit. There is no right or wrong way. Just do what feels good to you. And again, Please take the time in between the postures to do uh, the transition, the, the um, relaxation poses, the opposite postures, the movement, because it's really, again, a lot of times where you're going to learn um, a little bit more about how that whole experience felt for you, where you might find um, relief that maybe you weren't expecting, and sometimes you'll find um, some pain that you weren't expecting something you might not have experienced while you were actually in the pose, but when you came out, it didn't feel good. Um, and even though we might be in virtual format, <clears throat> don't hesitate to reach out when you're having issues with postures um, and you're struggling to find the right props and to make them uh, doable wherever you are. I'm always happy to help when you need it. All right. As I said, for the most part in this practice today, I want it to, to be about our spine. So we're going to take some backbending poses, some twisting poses, some forward folding poses. So a little bit of, of everything. 
I think the next posture though I would like to have you take is a child's pose. And there are a couple of different options for child's pose. When you take child's pose, let's start at the, at the feet. A lot, oftentimes a lot of people, and this is not child's pose, but when you get the tops of the, the ankles and the feet on the floor, and that is very uncomfortable, you can, if you need a little bit more space, right, you can roll up a blanket or a towel and put that here underneath. If you're uncomfortable enough, tops of the feet end up on the floor. Um, for a really rounded back, knees together and feet together, so starting off in sort of a hero's pose. Belly up and over, forehead coming down. Again, if you're kind of stuck here and your head doesn't touch the earth, bring something here to meet your forehead, arms along the side. So this opens the shoulders, it rounds the back, that's an option. If not, knees come out wide and that space allows the belly to lay down flat in between the thighs. Again, you could rest all the way on the floor um, if you feel better with support, like lay the bolster underneath, the towel, a couple of pillows, etc. cetera. Um, if you choose, I'm gonna start your five minutes. If you choose, forehead could be on the floor. If you would like a little bit of um, twist in the neck, right, some extra extension in the neck, you could take one cheek at a time today and I'll be sure and let you know when we are halfway uh, through our five minutes. So again, if your knees and feet are together, arms might be along your side, palms face up, that drops the shoulders forward and down. If your knees are wide, arms tend to go out in front, but let them be soft, right? So you're not ending up with the shoulders and the ears. So relaxing the shoulders, maybe even bending the elbows if that feels even better. And here, if you're laying over a prop or you're laying over your thighs, obviously breathing your full yoga breath in the front of the body becomes difficult, but I don't want that to let that hold you back. The good, Full breath is still very important. So now it's the opportunity to breathe into the back of the rib cage. So think about breathing back into the shoulders, um, through the ribs, the floating ribs, the kidneys, the lumbar spine, your lower back. Right. So really opening up that part of the body, which you would never breathe into, just normally walking around. Your belly and your chest kind of rise and fall. Right. Some of us are just abdominal breathers belly just rises and falls a little. Um, so really taking the opportunity to, to breathe into different areas of your body is so super beneficial. You're just over a minute and a half. Um, I think we don't realize um, how many ways there are to breathe and how many um, really different therapies um, that good breath control and different breath practices bring um, to our day. So um, experimenting with how they make you feel um, during just a pranayama practice. Uh, maybe you sit on a mat and have um, just some breath work or using it during your asanas, the postures themselves and, and see how that really um, accentuates the experience for you. You are just at two and a half minutes. So if you did have your head turned to one side, take a gentle inhale, lift ever so slightly, and then exhale for your second side. So using the breath, even though this is not a vinyasa class where we're breathing and moving um, traditionally, we can certainly use the breath to make transitions, to add to um, how we're moving in and out of poses, et cetera. Take a moment, again, clearly the lower part of the body is targeted here, but oftentimes when we start to feel stress in the lower body, we end up with stress, again, in the neck, the jaw, the shoulders, the eyes. So watching for those tendencies and those patterns in your own practice and adjusting as you need to. You do have a minute and a half left and I'm gonna leave you here with your own thoughts and your own breath and your own 
sort of inward experience for the next minute and a half. Last several deep breaths here in your child's pose. And as I'll always remind you, please take the time to transi transition as slowly out of the posture the, with the same tenderness and care as you got into the posture. So again, those two strong hands under your shoulders and inhale, begin to rise up. Maybe coming to your hands and knees from your child's pose. And again, at hands and knees, you may take some cat cows, kind of working through the spine, shifting forward and back. You could take a uh, forward rest again. You could take downward facing dog. You could get down onto your back, lay down, roll around. Maybe a nice roll on the back uh, would feel good after working on the spine, right? So you might hug the knees in, keep the knees and the feet closed and sort of really work through some circles. You're gonna use some abdominal muscles there. You're gonna roll around on the outer edges of your hips, your lumbar spine and your kidneys. You might take the feet out wide, taking a windshield wipers, swaying the knees side to side. That can feel really good. But again, ultimately, as always, there is no right or wrong option there. Take the next minute to just move through any of those um, postures, breath, movement, stillness um, that feels good to you. All right, so we're going to take what is not a traditional um, yin yoga pose, but again, I'm looking for stuff to do with the spine. And I think anytime we can get some back bending in, anytime we can get the hip flexors in there is a really great uh, bonus. So options, um, you will oftentimes see me take this um, back bend, hip flexor stretch with a block, which is where I'll start. So um, I would take a block on the shortest side for this particular purpose. And if I'm using a block for this, it goes underneath the sacrum. So I'm essentially just going to be here in a, a baby little bridge pose. So I've got a slight arch of my back. My feet are going to stay on the floor. And so I'm going to leave us here for six minutes and I'll let you know minute by minute where we're at. So we're just going to start with this up first. Again, you could use a rolled up blanket or you could go as high as a bolster. You could use a pillow or two, um, whatever again you've got handy. And again, I'm just looking to give myself some space underneath my back. So a nice arch here. So again, I'm gonna leave us here for six minutes. And so we're gonna start off with just this sort of supported bridge. And then again, I'm gonna let you know minute by minute, you could maybe at some point straighten one leg. This is where I'm talking about getting into those hip flexor and psoas muscles. 
So from here, you might take just one leg, you might take the other, both at the same time, right leg, left leg, both, whatever works for you. But again, I will time us for six minutes and you do with those six minutes what you like as I call out minute by minute. So again, back bend, supported, and unless, unless you have a, a, a prop that's really unusual, um, this support is going on again underneath the sacrum, so it's past the lumbar spine. There's a triangular shaped bone called the sacrum, and that would be lifted so that the lumbar spine gets a nice arch. All right, timer starting, six minutes. I'll call out every minute. I'm not going to speak in between. I'm going to ask you to just settle in here and breathe into that back bend, breathe into the front of the chest, and eventually we'll breathe all the way down through the toes with long straight legs. If there's any pain in the back at any point, please gently take yourself out of this posture. Otherwise, just breathe deeply relax feel the support of the earth beneath you holding up the body as you sort of surrender and open yourself physically and emotionally You're just at one minute, one minute into six. Just at two minutes, two minutes into six. Again, potentially straightening one leg, straightening the other, maybe straightening both at the same time. Maybe staying where we started with the soles of the feet on the ground, your choice. You might also consider various arm positions. You may be there just resting arms along your side. It might feel nice to take maybe your arms out into T position if you've got the space to do it. You might take your arms T position, palms face down, right? Having that different uh, sort of rotation in the shoulder joint. How about cactus arms? That could feel good, right? Getting some space across the chest. Maybe there's space over the back of you and you get to drape your hands over the back of the head, soft elbows. Options, variations, ways to um, again, take a, just a slightly different spin on your posture. Um, just over three minutes, so halfway there. Maybe there is a minute where you'd like to turn your head to one side and just sit with this nice cervical twist here through the neck, the throat, the jawline. Again, you still got um, two and a half minutes left, so you have plenty of time to add variation find yourself settling in pretty easily. Wherever you find yourself, focus on your breathing. Remembering the pattern that you chose to breathe in, either balanced or focusing on the inhale or the exhale. And just try to continue that pattern. You're just at four minutes.
And you have just about one more minute here. Last 30 seconds of long, deep breath. Last 30 seconds of surrender. And please, as you take these last few breaths, first get your feet back on the floor, knees to sky. Anytime we work with the back, we need to be very mindful of moving slowly. So with the feet flat on the floor, you'll use an inhale to press into the feet to lift the hips and go ahead and gently slide the props out from underneath. Really slowly as you exhale, the hips back to the floor. And again, any movement, breathing that feels good for you um, in that um, release time, take the next minute or two to just move. Again, it could be windshield wipers where you're swaying the feet side to side. <clears throat> it could be um, or just a really long, nice stretch from your fingers to your toes. It could be hugging the knees and moving around the back. Again, it could be those circles on the ceiling. A happy baby might feel nice. Right? Just really engaging into the hips and the low back. Um, pelvic tilts, just really arching and flattening the back a few times. Anything that feels good to you, right? No wrong, no wrong way to, to navigate through the body. Just be mindful. All right, next posture. Um, let's twist the spine. So, props out of the way. Um, if you are fortunate enough to have a sandbag or something weighted at home that you'd like to add to your, <clears throat> excuse me, your spinal twist, you're welcome to do that as well. So again, if you practice regularly and you have your favorite version of a spinal twist that you want to take, please feel free to do that. Otherwise, I'll give you a couple of options here. I am turning my head to the side to see you, but please don't take your posture uh, with your head off to the side. Um, when you're ready to go into your spinal twist, start with your gaze straight up to the sky. So here again, foundation is so important, adjusting the hips, the shoulders, long neck, back of the head is supported. So options would be to cross the right over the left like a girl would sit in a chair, so the knees are stacked on top of each other. And then you would take your spinal twist here. You could also straighten the left and put the sole of the right foot on the left thigh and take a spinal twist this way. So it's just going to change the experience a little bit. You could also, I would recommend in this version, arms out to T position, tucking the knees up and exhaling, dropping. I find it a little difficult to keep my arms grounded because my low back is tense. So that would be a little bit more difficult. And again, if you've got weight, if you have a sandbag at home, you can rest the sandbag on the thighs. And you want to be able to release that sort of grip or that uh, tension <clears throat> from the opposite hand that's trying to encourage downward. All right, five minutes. Deep breathing, five minutes of inhale length, exhale twist. Inhale a little longer, exhale surrender, twisting. All right, just letting the breath again um, give you that deeper experience. And so today I asked you not only to have good full yogic breath, to, but to consider if energetically you needed to change your breath, if you were feeling unsteady or balanced, that you needed some grounding, focusing on the exhale, if you need some uplifting, focusing on the inhale. And so to take that into a richer experience, 
as we move through the posture, see how it might change um, the sensation, the feeling, the emotions of the practice. And sometimes when we work through these difficult poses, we work through, break down the scar tissue, the emotional scar tissue, the, the traffic jams that are going on in our bodies. When we start breaking that stuff down, there can be an emotional sort of flood from that. So no being afraid, no need to be afraid of those experiences. Welcome whatever experience comes from the mindfulness, the breath, the postures, like all the whole package, right? So much to learn. So much to learn. Say it again, are you smiling? Because it just feels good to smile. We're just about two and a half minutes in here. Know that, again, making an adjustment in this posture is just like any other to encourage yourself deeper or to ease out just a little bit. And you could, with legs dropped to left side, you could continue that spiral a little deeper by lifting the head and looking over your right shoulder. So sort of opposite energy, legs to the left, gaze to the right. Um, but that might be too much. And anyone with neck issues, any cervical pain, any um, cervical injuries, probably not a good idea to take such a, a deep twist in the neck. Breathing well, softening the eyes, resting the cheeks and the jaw and the tongue. You're just at three and a half minutes. You have just about one more minute here. As you begin to take your last several deep breaths, if your arm does have, happen to be out to the side, as you bring the knees to the sky, bring the right arm back in. Exhale there to unwind the legs. And then again, as always, any breath, any movement, that long stretch, fingertips to tippy toes, hug of the knees getting up and taking a down dog, stretching out, whatever feels good. There's, again, no wrong way to sort of release yourself. Just be mindful and use your breath. Namaste. Continuing to focus on good pranayama, focusing on the breath so that the rest of the um, 
busy thoughts and the distractions become background noise, you're aware but not attached. We'll begin to set ourselves up for our second side. And so again, um, make sure you take the same version of a spinal twist that you took on the first side, but stop once you're on your back. Adjust the hips, adjust the shoulders, relax everything from the tailbone all the way up and open wide through the front of the chest so the shoulder blades are resting wide on the floor. And again, if you're taking that sort of traditional spinal twist, you're crossing the left over the right. And even here, you might start to feel that in the outer IT band of um, that left thigh. And then of course, we're gonna add to it by taking the exhale. You're thinking about elongating this femur bone as it draws away from the hip socket and down towards the floor. So you're getting sensation, some of you across the wing of your pelvis, through the lumbar spine, maybe even through the rib cage here. And so as the knees drop to the right side, your left shoulder may begin to rise a little bit. If you're resting easily, you may open up uh, the front of the left shoulder. And again, either leaving the gaze straight up to the sky or now, or maybe eventually, taking the gaze over your left shoulder. Your choice, be again, mindful about the fact that you're gonna be in the pose for five minutes. So progression, letting time and space and breath sort of dictate where you can and should go. Because sometimes we think, oh, I should be able to do that. Well, if that's not what your body is saying is appropriate today, then it's okay. Uh, be comfortable with the limitations. Be comfortable with um, today being different than yesterday because the reality is it's, it's always that way. And yesterday no longer exists anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant, is it not? All right, five minutes, big inhales, elongating the spine. The exhales that are deepening yourself into the twist. Again, feeling the experience through the entire side body, again, through the outer edge of the thigh, the pelvis, the lower back, maybe even up into the rib cage. And uh, for many of us, you're feeling it across the chest from the sternum to the points of the shoulders as you kind of roll over and open up. And, you know, maybe all of that felt pretty decent. And then you got to your neck and you went to turn your head. You're like, oh, you know, you're noticing it here. Um, layer by layer, add and stop where you need to be. Breathe. Don't worry about what it's supposed to look like or what it should have looked like or any of that stuff. Just enjoy the experience, the wonder of where you are today mindfulness, that being in the moment, having this experience, because this experience really is all there is. You are just at two minutes. Take a moment again to feel tension if there is any in the hands, jaw, neck, throat, maybe your chest, right? Maybe in this pose, we're still struggling to get open in the front of the chest, right? We're struggling to find broad and open chest. So chest, neck, jaw, eyes, any place that you're kind of still a little tense. You're at two and a half minutes, so halfway there. How do we do today without worrying about time? Hopefully we've been able to really just focus on the breath 
focus on how the body's feeling, how this posture is feeling, instead of those days when you come to your mat, you're doing your practice, as I know many of you have experienced, and your mind is um, on the plants or the things that have yet to be done um, during your day. So it might be, I need to go to the grocery store, I need to pick up the kids, I need to send that email. How do we do today with focusing on the breath and on the body and the being in the moment and letting those distractions become irrelevant? because in this moment they are. And if you found that you struggled with that today, again, there's no need for judgment or criticism about it. It's just you recognizing where your tendencies and your patterns were today and how we might, uh, sometimes it's just that becoming aware that begins to change things. You're at four minutes and 30 seconds. You have about 30 more seconds to surrender here. To be in this nice final twist. To be relaxed and to breathe. So, and again, as in all postures, particularly in yin, how slowly we come out of the posture is really important. So again, if your head is turned to the side, if your right arm is out, take an inhale, come to center, the legs are gonna come at center. So we're gonna bring ourselves back to midline. If your legs are crossed, exhale, unwind the legs. Uh, now free movement in any way that suits you. Long body. The windshield wipers were swaying the knees, sitting up, maybe taking a forward fold. Maybe that's not quite enough. Maybe you need to stand up and take a forward fold or a stretch or a twist or shake it out. Our yin practice is um, completely floor-based. So sometimes that um, yin energy feels good with a little bit of yang. So standing up, shaking it out, moving around a little bit. Um, so again, there is never any wrong way. So just move in any way that feels good. So we're going to take the time that you need to, um, to recover from that last spinal twist. And we're gonna move into our final resting position. So Shavasana oftentimes <laughs> done with a little bit of support, um, particularly after we take a, a yin practice, we were working on the lower body so much. And um, maybe in some particular practices here, we did swan today, which is really deep into the hip flexors. And then we did our little bridge pose. So anything that you have that might um, lift the legs a little bit to soften this stretch here, instead of laying flat on the ground, it could be something simple as this rolled up blanket, a couple of pillows. If you have a bolster, that would be lovely. Um, those of you that want something maybe a little different for Shavasana, you are welcome to take legs up the wall. Or potentially, if you love um, building the little bridge that we do sometimes to take something uh, Again, more supportive, um, nice back bend here. Maybe you sit with legs crossed. Maybe you sit with legs straight. Maybe you take butterfly because that feels yummy. I want this to feel yummy or delicious, whatever um, sort of version of final rest that you've chosen. So again, traditional, just sort of on your back, legs or knees supported. Um, legs up the wall or up the dresser or <laughs> up a tree if you happen to be outside, right? Um, but yeah, anything that helps you sit for just a few minutes to take rest. And I will say not being in a studio, you do have the advantage of sort of cheating and not taking the rest. And I will encourage you to try not to do that. Um, 
it is that time of, if you think about it, the word Shavasana means corpse pose. And so it's this sort of death of the whole experience, this separation of mind and body, this disconnection, this stopping, and then there's this resurrection, this um, coming to life again that happens afterwards. So this is a, a pivotal sort of point of transition. So savor it, take advantage of it. So if you would today, go ahead and find whatever that position is for you. Make yourself super comfy. Again, if you find yourself chilly in your space, putting a blanket over you, putting on some socks or a favorite, um, maybe fuzzy sweatshirt or something. Um, you'll learn more and more as you take the, the yin yoga practice, what you like, what you love, and what you need. So take a moment to scan your own body where um, might you need an adjustment and go ahead and make that adjustment now. Anything that will make you maybe 10 to 15% more comfortable. We're releasing the practice of pranayama, going back to allowing the body just to breathe itself. The breath entering and leaving the body without effort. I'm going to ask you in Shavasana today to consider beginning to cultivate your own inner resource. We use an inner resource in Yoga Nidra as a safe place to go that becomes very tangible to us. In inner, inner resource, we create a place in our mind that in this place we feel completely supported loved, secure, encouraged, joyous, all of the lovely things in life we feel in this place. And sometimes our inner resource comes from a previous experience or time in our lives, a place that we've been, memories that we have, that we can sort of tap into. And so I want you to consider what you might cultivate as your own inner resource. Please know that if nothing comes to mind here, that's okay to enjoy the stillness, the silence, and the sort of wonder of it all. If a place comes very clear to you, it could be a place you've been, a place that you've never been, that you really wanted to go to. I would ask you to consider this place and the feelings, the sensations that you get being in this place. So let's walk through that for just a moment. Again, if nothing came very specifically to you today about what your inner resource might be, that's okay. If something speaks very clearly to you as a place where you feel encouraged, loved, secure, at ease, comfortable, let's talk about that inner resource create the felt sense of that. In your inner resource, what do you see? What information do the eyes bring to you? Colors in your inner resource, the textures within those colors, other shapes that are very apparent to you in your inner resource. In this inner resource, what information do the ears bring to you? The sounds around you in your inner resource. There may be quiet rustling of the trees and the wind, the ocean waves. Maybe there's the crackling of a fireplace. Boisterous, loud music, happy voices. What are you hearing in your inner resource? Again, we're creating the felt sense of being in this place. And know that if nothing came to you today, that's okay. In your inner resource, aromas in the air. What does it smell like here in this place? your special place. 
Does the air smell crisp and dry like autumn? Is there some delicious food cooking around you? Do you smell the favorite scent of perfume or cologne, someone you love? What aromas come to you in your inner resource? In your inner resource, <coughs> excuse me, are there any flavors in your mouth? Is there some delicious food that you're eating? A fresh, crisp glass of water or a favorite cocktail, a cup of coffee? What are the tastes that you might taste in your inner resource? And last we, lastly, as we create this felt sense of being in this very special place, what are the sensations on skin? Can you feel the warmth of the sun? The cool, dry air as a breeze blows across your face? Lots of puffy, warm clothing, fabrics that just feel delicious. Maybe your favorite blanket wrapped around. What sensations on the skin come to mind in this very special place? I would ask you to consider this felt sense and how special it is to you. If an inner resource wasn't cultivated very easily or at all today, that's a wonderful thing as well. Embrace that openness for that to be created at another time. However, those of you that did have a very surreal, uh, attached, significant experience with cultivating your inner resource, let's utilize that as a tool. As a tool when we need to step back and take a um, a break from our day, from our experience, from our circumstance, that we can sit quietly for just a moment and tap back into this inner resource. Experience through the senses what it feels like to be in this very special place. Again, if that inner resource came clear to you today, let yourself smile about it. Ah, if it did not know that that is something that might be a beautiful way to practice for you to sit in moments of stillness and create that for yourself. Here, as we begin to end our practice, wrap up this experience, just begin to breathe and move and stretch your body out. Deepen, elongate, hug yourself, whatever it is that brings you back to the surface, back to your surroundings. And when you're ready, take a moment to maybe roll to your left side in fetal position, taking that time there to really pause, say thank you, to accept, find contentment with the experience for you today, whatever it was. <laughs> When you feel ready, if you are on your left side, take your right hand, press into the earth and use the inhale to rise up again. Find yourself in some sort of a seated position so that you can just take that time to signify the end of your practice. And we'll do that collectively together, if you would, with me. So sit up nice and tall, relax the body, soften the eyes, a gentle smile, and maybe Anjali Mudra. From here, we'll just seal in all this really good energy, these um, inner resources, these um, moments of stillness and quiet openness to see what's coming. All that good, yummy stuff, we'll send that out into the universe by chanting the sound of home together. If you'd like to join me, let's inhale fully. Oh.
my friends, it's been a true honor and a privilege to spend time with you to share in your yoga experience. Go enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. And until I get to see you again next time, I do wish you well. Namaste.